Alright, welcome to a video on Newton's method, which is a calculus one topic that is almost always done, and this is an approximation technique. So we can find roots of formulas using, or roots of functions I should say, using this neat little recursive formula here, which is the next value of x is going to be x minus the function at x over its derivative at x. So this might seem a little weird for some people because they've never seen a recursive function, but essentially what we're saying is that x2 is equal to x1 minus the function of f of x1 divided by its derivative at x1. So then we get this x2 value. And our x3 is equal to x2 minus our function at x2 divided by its derivative at x2. So we use this value and we plug it in to the next equation and we keep going until we want our function to be accurate to let's say k decimal places which means that our xn plus 1 value should equal xn to that many decimal places. So if we have say 0 0.70716 and this happens to be x5 and x6 happens to be 0 0.70719 then we can say that our function is accurate to four decimal places at x6 and let's say x7 is also 0 0.70719 then it would be accurate to five decimal places at x7. So because I don't have a calculator on me and all these things are usually done with calculators I'm just going to go through one question and that'll be it. So we want to find what the sixth root of 2 is. And this is similar, and you have to be able to do this, is the same thing as saying, well, let's let x equal to the sixth root of 2. Then we can say that x sixth is equal to 2, so x to the sixth minus 2 is equal to 0. And now, we can do something to solve this equation because we are now solving for a root, just what the method is for. So our first step, what we have to do, is we have to pick an x1. And we have to pick something that is close to what our estimate is, or close to what the actual value is. So this requires a little bit of brains. Well. The sixth root of 2 is going to be greater than the sixth root of 1 and less than the sixth root of 3. So I can't imagine it's going to be that much bigger than 1. So we're going to pick x1 is equal to 1. Okay, so now with our function, x2 is going to be equal to x1 minus f of x1 over f prime of x1. So our x1 is equal to 1, so we can start substituting this in. So we're going to have 1 minus f of 1 over f prime of 1. And when we evaluate this with a calculator, because you need to do this with a calculator in this scenario, we are going to have 1.166667. So, of course, how do you find f of x and f prime of x? Well, our f of x is going to be equal to x6 minus 2, just like it is here. And when we take its derivative, of course, we're going to get 6x to the 5. So that is what that is. So now our x3 is going to be equal to x2 minus f of x2 over f prime of x2. Now, it gets a little bit messier here, especially when I don't have a calculator on me, because we have f of x2 is equal to 1.666667. So that's going to be 1.166667 minus f of 1.166667 divided by f prime of 1 point, this huge number. So then our x cubed is going to be some other value. And of course, I'm not going to do every single step here. But eventually, we're going to get x5 is going to be equal to 1.12246205. And our x6 value is going to be the same thing. So, at this point, we know that these two values are equal. 
So we can say that it's accurate to eight decimal places at x5. So we only need five iterations to find that it is equal or accurate to eight decimal places. But there are situations that can arise. Suppose if the approximation does not converge on some number. So let's say our x5 is equal to 1.667, then our x6 is going to be like negative 5, and then our x7 is going to be 8, and our x8 is negative 55, then, then you say it has no solution. But that would be wrong, because everything is going to have a solution, even if it's in the imaginary number set. So the thing is here, your estimate for your x1 value, your x1 is bad in this case. If this happens, your x1 is bad, and you need to pick a new value that's a little bit closer. So essentially, you're saying, well, if the approximation method requires I have an answer close to what I'm going to get, then why would I ever use this? And to that, I say, one, check out a course on numerical analysis. This will either be offered in a computer science department or a math department, depending on which it is. It's normally not the same thing as real analysis, but some universities will put the two courses together. Um, this is usually a programming course where you do a lot with um, MATLAB or Maple, and you will do things and plot functions and find different values. So if you want to know the details of this and other approximation methods, take a numerical analysis course. And the reason it's in a Calculus 1 course is because it is a nice introduction to what you would be doing in the future if you chose to continue on. So that's Newton's method. There's really not that much to it. If you get a Newton's method question on an exam, you're very lucky because those are very easy questions and the worst you can possibly do is accidentally type a number into a calculator wrong. And most exams, they won't even let you use calculators, so are you going to worry about this question showing up on an exam? Probably not. So next video, we're going to talk about L'Hopital's Rule, which is back to limits for just a quick, quick video.